it, we practice it so much, but like every time you do it, it just moves so fast. Like you're like, <laughs> I just, I just like, okay, it happened. You know, that's, that's that. And then, you know, we're on pre it's, it's pregame time. Hello and welcome. My name is Zoe and I am so excited to be interviewing exceptional Illini from all across campus so that you can get an inside look into what it's like to be a student at Illinois. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss a video and also let us know in the comments who you'd like to hear from next. Today I'm sitting down with Evan. Evan is a history major and he's also a member of the Marching Illini and he plays the sousaphone, which is basically the coolest instrument ever. And also Evan and I were in a musical this semester and so we got to reminisce a little bit during our interview and I really hope you enjoy. Thank you again for doing this interview and um, I guess uh, my first question for you is just a basic introduction. Who are you? Where are you from? What year in school? What's your major? And uh, something you love about Illinois. All right. Uh, well, uh, my name is Evan Nielsen. I'm from Bartlett, Illinois, which is a northwest suburb of Chicago. Uh, I am a history major, and I, I will be a junior in the fall. And uh, I mean, I chose Illinois because um, I just, uh, when I was going, looking at college and stuff, I just saw this place that had such this, this great balance of, of really serious and well-rounded academics, but just, you know, such a vibrant social life and school spirit. So. Absolutely. I totally agree. That was my thinking too, because it's really just a huge mix of everything. And it, it is a big place, but that means that you have a lot of options. So. Exactly. I, I've always thought that like, no matter who you are, like there's, there's like, I don't know, it's so big. There's something for you. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And so history, did you come in knowing that you wanted to be a history major or did you kind of stumble upon it? Mm -hmm. Well, it was uh, something I always was kind of into. Uh, I remember it was, I was in third grade and, uh, and we were look, doing American history stuff, you know, very elementary level stuff. <laughs> and I just, this, uh, this uh, book of like, I just got my hands on this book of, uh, facts about all the presidents and I was like this is the coolest thing um so when I you know got to, when I got to high school and I got to take some AP history courses uh a push and uh other courses like that I was I mean I saw this as something that I was still just genuinely interested in on like a you know on a real academic level um but so I I mean I'm a creative person as well and I have an affinity for stories in general and storytelling and you know history is stories and I think uh, there's a lot of room for creativity in terms of uh, how we present history and how we teach it uh, and I think there's a lot of great space for uh, synergy between uh, his uh, study of history and other you know creative uh, mediums. So. For sure yeah there's a ton of crossover I mean I um, I'm excited to share this with our, our audience, we recently got to be in almost a show together. And, you know, that was about a, a whole collection of stories as well. Right. And um, so, I mean, there's crossover with True. theater and mm -hmm. history and there's crossover with literature and history. I mean, it's all so connected. Um, Want to tell me a little bit about specifically the history department at Illinois? Yeah, uh, it's, um, it's, it's not a huge department in terms of um, the amount of students, but it's again very it's very diverse it's very diverse people from lots of different places and backgrounds and um people with different passions within history um and there's i mean semester you know every semester there's so many different uh different courses available uh that i think um no matter no matter what you might be interested in history wise there's uh there's really so much to learn and there's so many different there's so many different courses that are relevant in so many uh, so many different ways like um uh, I got this semester I took um I took African American history and uh, I'm, I'm really glad I'm really glad I did because it you know it allowed for uh, just some super uh, you know provocative conversations about, about race and, and obviously stuff that's still relevant today of course yeah, I I have a friend who took that class and just, or a, at least a similar 
similar kind of class. What did you say the name of the class was? It was, uh, it was African American history. It's like the second half. So 1877 to present. Got it. Okay. Okay. I mean, I've heard other people rave about like that series of courses. So that's really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, okay. And you said, tell me which suburb you're from again. I'm from Bartlett, Illinois. It's, it's, or it's, it's, you know, a smaller guy kind of right between a couple of bigger suburbs. You're Schaumburg, Elgin, Bartlett's kind of right in the middle. Very cool. And, uh, I, I gotta ask, you mentioned in your, like, pre-interview synopsis that um, your mom and your sister went to Illinois, too. Did that provide mm -hmm. any influence over your decision? Yeah, I mean, yeah, just frankly, yeah, absolutely. Um, so when my, uh, when my sister was, in, was uh, at Illinois, she graduated uh, spring of 2017. So I was, I was still, I was an old enough you know, kid to really ap ap appreciate uh, Illinois because she was, um, I'm in the marching line and she was as well. We can oh, cool. make that connection there. Uh, but so went to a lot of football games, uh, you know, throughout um, middle school age and couple, first couple years of high school is when, uh, when she was at Illinois. So uh, I was still, you know, really able to appreciate it all. And it was always just a place I, I, I felt, I felt comfortable. Um, and and it was something that we always look forward to just going, driving down to Champaign for a football game or, or not just, uh, just for pleasure. And to see my sister was always just something that we were all so excited about. And, uh, but when it, uh, you know, came time for you know, me to really look at it, like, is Illinois like the right place for me, uh, in terms of academics? And, and it was, and I, and I was just so happy to see that it was, it was, it was so the right place because there was, uh, because everyone, I mean, no matter what, the, across all the humanities departments, there's such a, there's just such, um, it's, I don't know, it's, it's, it's just such a com community across all these different uh, departments, not just history, but, uh, I don't know, everyone's so excited, again, as I said, about uh, school and the, and academics and how uh, these different departments uh, work, work with one another, and of course, the school spirit football game uh, side of things. Naturally. So. I always say that there is no weak department at the University of Illinois because no, everyone no way. is, yeah, everyone is so, um, I mean, we just have excellent professors in every single major. And so basically that just fosters such an excellent energy across the entire school. So it's, to me, it's like, it's a great school to go to if you know what you want to do. And it's also a great school to know to, to go to if you have no idea what you want to study because yeah. you're fine no matter what. That's true. That's true. Are there any specific games or memories that stand out to you over the last year? Yeah. Uh, so, well, this, um, so my, from my freshman year, uh, my first year, uh, you know, it was an okay football season, but I was really excited about basketball because I'm just kind of a, a basketball guy and um there was it was the game that we played at home against michigan state who was ranked number nine at the time and i was illinois not favored but illinois like led the whole time and it was so it was so exciting and it was my first time like seeing a, a, a court storm you know oh. in person that was cool that's awesome yeah but but of course i mean we can't not mention a homecoming this past year against Wisconsin. That was, that was, that was something else. It, like I, I used, I still get, I still get, you know, goosebumps just thinking about it because it was, Illinois was, you know, kind of down or earlier on. And then it was just like, it was like, it felt like it was, it felt like over the span of one minute, like the score was like within two. Yeah. Like it was just like, bam, bam, bam. And then, and then we're like, it's, it's, it's happening. It's happening. Um, but yeah, just like that kick went through and we're all sitting down and, and, you know, and then obviously everyone on the field. And so once we finished playing, uh, we went down on the field to, you know, take pictures and stuff and kind of enjoy the moment. And I was, I wanted to, cause I, I really like meeting a lot of the players and talking to them just whenever I see them, I just always like to engage just cause I, I really, 
enjoy it. And I, and I just so happened to walk right by uh, James McCourt, you know, the hero of the day, our the hero. Kicker, and got, got, right. I got, I got, I did get a, a picture with him, but I'm not even looking at the camera. I'm looking at him. So <laughs> it's a really, it's a really, he's looking at the camera, he's smiling, but I'm just like looking at him like you, you've made everyone, everyone, all these thousands of people around that you just made, you just made their year. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Man, yeah. imagine Full the day. pressure, but he, you know, it went through. That's the main thing. <laughs> It did. It did. What an awesome day. Yeah, we were there too. My my parents and I were there for that game and you know, we rushed the field with everybody. It was so special. Right. Yeah. And that's and that's like that's the super cool part about it is with like all the clips I saw after I mean of course I was excited for us and the team, but like all oh, like parents who have been for kids for years, you know, who lived through you know, a lot, a lot of years of football, you know, hope, hoping for a moment like this. And then like, you know, to see parents who went there, you know, this is like the first amazing football experience they've had with their, with the, you know, their son or daughter. So that's, that's another cool side of it. Yeah, definitely. absolutely. And you play the sousaphone, right? Correct. Correct. So um, my band director in high school was, uh, he also went to the university of Illinois and he was a sousaphone and I believe he yes. was one of yeah he was one of the first um first members of like the sousaphone line where you guys draw cool tricks and you like spin them you know what i'm talking about oh, like at the beginning yeah can you yeah. Just tell me a yeah, little bit about like learning that and yeah pre-game cool yeah so uh that's um it's like it's super fun to do but it's it's so much pressure i feel like that's my my worst worst nightmare to mess. <laughs> it's called it's called R it's called it's called R square we call it because it's two different rotations. Um, I, I don't remember exactly where that where, where or when the name came from, but um, we uh, you know we're, so we're waiting at the sideline before the game or watch clock. So then um, you know we see Professor Hauser up at the ladder up at the front of the field, and so we take four steps exactly four steps out onto the field. And we, you know, make sure we gotta we have to be equal, equidistant from one another, right, for the line to line to look good. And then, um, the, then Professor Hauser goes points to us, and then uh, at the, the very uh, the far left of the line, whoever is on uh, whoever's in that spot, they they just scream coming down, and we all scream coming down. And then we, you know, it's. <laughs> we practice it so much but like every time you do it it just moves so fast like you're like i just i just like okay it happened you know that's that's that and then you know we're on pre it's it's pregame time so no if if you mess up no no uh no time to fret over it so you just gotta you know uh put as much energy through your arms as possible so that's that's my strategy at least oh cool it is such a gorgeous visual effect from the stands it's one of my favorite parts yeah. very cool all right. Well, um, you said you're a bit of a movie buff. So if you don't mind me yeah. asking, could you give me either a top 10 list or like a top five, whatever? Just tell me your favorite mm -hmm. movies right now and perhaps a little bit about All why right. you like each one. So uh, first, I kind of uh, I have a very sentimental connection to Forrest Gump. That mm. was uh, that was one of the movies. Yeah, that was one of the movies that I first saw when I became a self-proclaimed movie buff. You know, it was it was it was one of it was one of those. So I was like, what? this this whole and again, I am a history guy, and it's all the you know how this yeah. guy was tied in with all these historical events. So yeah. and of course, you know, it's sad too, and it's funny, and you know, who just who doesn't love Tom Hanks and everything? Uh, of course, you know. But uh, so th there's that one. Uh, another movie I love is. A fantastic Mr. Fox, um, oh, the, the claymation one. movie. Yeah, um, I love the director uh, Wes Anderson, and and I think I'm not, I I like uh, if you if you love a fall color palette. I mean that movie is for you. Like that, oh, yeah. that might be the only that might be the only Thanksgiving movie out there. It <laughs> it has the color palette and and you know just the feel of Thanksgiving. Totally. Uh, yes. But, yeah, but you know, great characters, lots of great voices, super funny. Um, another one of my favorites is um, "There Will Be Blood." Mm. It's 
It came out 2007, and Daniel Day Lewis plays. He plays a crazy, um, yeah. So obviously he's like insane, insanely good in everything, mm-hmm. and he plays just a a crazy oil baron uh, type guy, and it's and it takes place during the gold rush, uh, early 1900s. So more history stuff, I guess. Uh, yeah. But that's that's another favorite of mine. And then I had to name a couple more. Oh, I feel like it. Hey, it if changes that's a lot. Three. This, this, you know, yeah, that, that, I mean, that might be a that might be a solid top three. All right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Those are some good ones. I, I've seen two out of three, which is actually shocking for me because I am like the worst about movies. I've been really trying to watch more mm-hmm. lately, but even so, I'm yeah. still still catching up. Um, yeah. I mean, this has been a this is such a good year for movies this past year mm-hmm. with Parasite and. Um, Oh man, uh, Portrait of a Lady on Fire was another great one. Uh, Toy Story Four, which was like, blew me away. You know, I but, still haven't seen yeah. that. I gotta see it. I gotta catch up. I'm telling you. And now's the time because we have time for this. Now's the time. Yeah. Now's the time. Speaking of, you know, now being the time and the world being so different, uh, you want to talk mm-hmm. a little bit about your experience with the Line Eye Student Musicals and just a little bit about like what happened this semester. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, so uh, so I did theater and stuff in high school, um, and but I I came I was going coming into Illinois with the expectation of doing bands, and I was really kind of flying flying blind in terms of what theater outlet I would have access to. But I, it really was just I just stumbled upon some advertisement like by happenstance, uh, second semester of my freshman year, and the the show was. Footloose, and I was like, oh, I, I love Footloose, the movie, mm-hmm. so, and, and it just ended up being an awesome, awesome experience from, from day one, and I was, so yeah, I really was uh, looking forward to this semester to do, Footloose is a great show, but like Chorus Line, that's like, I mean, that's like high tier, you know, theater art, you know, so, um, and it's a show that I'm like, I probably won't have an opportunity to do it again, and of course, uh, with all the people from that I that I met previously so I was uh, really really excited and it was and obviously you can attest to this as well from day one it was uh, it was it was just such a it was such a, an, an encouraging environment for mm-hmm. just to be open with ourselves and and just use that for you know creativity and and it was such a tight-knit group from day one who everyone just was so talented and worked so hard and was never afraid to try something new or ask questions or um, which was just a super special environment to be in and and going into you know what happened in uh, in March uh, right before spring break you know we were all saying around that time was uh, and all those qualities I just mentioned that those were all you know the only reasons that we were able to do what we ended up doing which was our final and only dress rehearsal and performance and tech week all in one night. Um, uh, the last Thursday before, uh, before spring break and before, uh, you know, everything uh, started to uh, shut down around campus and everywhere. Um, but like, and I, I said then, and I keep saying now, it really does feel like, it really did feel like a like a movie or a, or a TV show. The way that we all were just, you know, we got that email and we were all, of course, devastated. But we knew this was the last. This, we knew this was uh, the last chance. So we all just put down whatever we were doing and we ran to the theater and we were just so ready. And it, and it was it just we had that mindset of this is a show. We're just gonna treat it like a show. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we were all so excited, like, oh, this is, and it was. And the fact that we are all that, you know, until at the very, very end, we all really held it together and just, you know, it's, it's, it was, uh, it was, it was theater magic, theater Theater magic, magic. if if you, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. It was totally like the season finale of a TV show or again, like a movie. It, it was just Mm -hmm. against all odds 
I mean, we had three weeks that we were expecting to have left in our rehearsal process before even starting tech, I think, or maybe two weeks. I don't know, but we had a, we were not, you yeah, know, we were just so. barely running the show at that point. But because a chorus line is such a minimal mm -hmm. set and because we were so, you know, we had our choreography learned and we had our, our songs learned and we had our characters developed and we were really starting to work well together. And it was just, I mean, I'm going to remember it forever. It was kind of, absolutely. I'm still speechless at the fact that we really did that. <laughs> right. right. Like, uh, like, um, one thing that there's this hashtag going around on social media recently, like, uh, like last normal picture or something like oh. something along those lines. And like, those were like my last normal pictures really of, you know, all of us being together. And, I'm, and, and I really, and I'm like, that's like the, that's like best case scenario. Like just to have having be like the last normal thing being just this, you know, singular, this singular sensation that we had, you know, uh, in Lincoln, in Lincoln Hall theater, uh, you know, just on that, just on that last night before, you know, everyone had to go home and, and I don't know, like, of course, of course, yes, obviously we all would have liked to have a full weekend of shows and some more time for rehearsals. But like the fact that like it happened the way it did, like, I don't know, I still like feel satisfied in the way it turned out. Yeah. Um, yeah. I also feel weirdly satisfied. I mean, given that, yeah, that it, was it feels night, weird. Yeah. Yeah. That that was the night, I think that was like Broadway's last night too. And I think the NBA was like, we're canceling mm -hmm. the, or we're postponing or canceling mm -hmm. the rest of the games. And I mean, the whole world just was screeching to a halt. And yet we were able to come together one more time. And, and even so, I think, I, I remember thinking, are we spreading COVID-19 to each other right now? It, it crossed my mind a couple of times and maybe it wasn't on campus yet. Yeah. So far, we don't know of anyone who's been sick, so I guess we were spared, but I mean, just no. public health concerns aside, it, it just was really lucky that we got to have that last hurrah experience. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. cool. Well, yeah. uh, you also mentioned that you're a pretty big music fan, so what are some of your favorite albums, mm -hmm. favorite artists? Well, uh, so recently I've been kind of getting uh, back. I've been trying to listen to music of the past. I don't know. I, I feel like now's a good time to move yeah. back and then, I don't know, just move forward. You know, if I have all this time to listen to music and stuff, I've listened to a lot of Elton John uh, recently. And even if it's like my, my mom is a, is a big Elton John fan, you know, she listened to it when, uh, you know, growing up and when she was younger. But for me, who I, I didn't listen to it when I was younger. Somehow it still feels nostalgic to me. Hmm. I don't know. It's, it's a really, it's a really kind of a unique, it's really kind of a, a unique quality to all those uh, different stories he can tell. Uh, he, he, you know, he told uh, through his songs. Uh, I am a big funk music guy. Um, so uh, I have my, my normal like rotation of funk bands and stuff like that. Wolfpack being uh kind of the, the modern leader in, uh, in terms, in terms of funk, just a super, super fun group. Um, but, uh, uh, another group I love is, um, I, I am also a fan of alternative music, some uh, newer alternative groups, Tame Impala being one of them. They put out an album not that long ago, yeah. kind of, uh, right for right in March. Um, and our, in uh, a couple months ago. And that's, uh, and that's just a super cool, uh, CD to listen to, super good, just very relaxing, uh, relaxing enough to put on while I'm working or doing other things. Um, I'm not, uh, and one more like random song that I, that I'm a big fan of right now uh, is, I feel like there's a million, there's, there's like multiple commercials that has, that have, it's Under Pressure by Queen featuring oh. David Bowie. Mm. I've been super, that song recently. <laughs> I'm like, wow, that is just a great song. Seven here heard it in a million different commercials and I don't know why, but yeah. Maybe it's a sign from the universe. It's a message. I don't Maybe. know what it means, but. Maybe. 
Maybe. Very cool. We're all under pressure right now. We are all under pressure, aren't we? <laughs> mm -hmm. oh. Well, um, we're getting towards the end of the regular portion of the interview. So I guess my, um, my last question for that is if you could talk to an entire like 3,000 seat concert hall full of students who are about to be freshmen at the University of Illinois or elsewhere, students who are about to start college and they were all mm -hmm. scared and all just wondering like what what is the future going to bring how are they going to survive what's i mean there's so much uncertainty if you were to give them a pep talk what would you say all right so i had to give them a pep talk i would say uh when uh when people uh come when people come together in a uh, community uh especially at a at a university uh like Illinois, there's when people come together like that. There's there's such a diversity of perspectives and ideas that that you know there will be a way for things to get better. Um, and even if the outside circumstances don't get better, if you just have people that are you know coming together and not afraid to share ideas and express themselves and and ask questions there's no there's no way that that they won't find a way to at least make the make the very most of of dire circumstances uh there's i don't know i even though some people might not think they're creative i think i think all people are to an extent and you know and when we can all just accept that there you know things there might be a new normal moving forward uh, I think if we can all just ac ac accept and, you know, accept that and just be willing to be creative and when I say take risks, I don't mean health risks, of course, but, of course. uh, but, not, but, but not afraid to try something new or do something that you've already liked to do, but in a different way. Uh, and when, yeah, just being just, uh, be, you know, being creative and being su supportive of one another in uh, their cre uh, in creativity and you know the great all this uh, uncertainty. Um, so I think uh, I think there's I mean whether you know we don't know how things you know will change long term moving moving forward, but I think uh, there's definitely still no matter. Uh, no matter who you are, there's still a lot to look forward to uh, for, the, for those students going into college. Yeah. I mean, college is a great place to be no matter what's going on in the world, I think. I mean, it's there's no better time to work on yourself and learn about yourself and and hopefully build a community in person. And even even mm -hmm. if not, I mean, there's... This, this university is incredible, and I have no doubt that um, we're going to be okay. Prospective students and admitted <laughs> students and, you know, current students like us who are just um, finishing up our, our Zoom university semesters, we're all going to be okay. Right. And, and uh, yeah, it's, it feels good to know that at, at the, I mean, once all of this is over 10 years from now, 10, 20, 40 years from now, we will be, we will still be Illinois graduates. We will always be Illinois graduates. Absolutely, exactly.